Let's take a few. And um, anybody want to share any testimonies tonight? Um, um, oops. I'm first. Um, <laughs> go sister <laughs> um i you know i'll be doing testimony but i will say that um yesterday um prophetic uh ground training amen was so great i was um telling pastor vanessa that you know doing um prophetic companies and, and prophesying and teams and stuff like that um you know I don't, I, I'm, you're stirred, you know, I'm yeah. stirred typically, right? But yesterday I was just, yeah. woo! Yeah. and I believe it is because, um, you know, many um, from Household of Faith was on there and our hearts are knitted together, being under the same um, family, um, spiritual family and covering. And I believe there was something in that and it just had me just so wound up and fired up and in a different way. Um, than than normal. So I was super excited for um, what the Lord did and what he is going to continue to do, which um, uh, some of that was displayed this morning. Um, so um, I'm just hopeful. I'm grateful. Um, and it was just, a, it was beautiful being able to do with, with the saints and with the family. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it felt different. And that's probably what I was, I was all, mm. <laughs> cartwheeling on the inside so um that's all i wanted to say Great. Uh, anybody else um i will be um i'm piggybacking off of what she just said yesterday was just it was filling it was confirming it was reassuring it was securing everything that has was, was been rolling inside of me um today i had a um encounter uh, with the Holy Ghost, and um, mm. I'm gonna try to tell you without crying because I gotta get myself together. I gotta tighten up a little bit. But um, in worship, it felt like um, it felt like a ball of wind. I was talking to um, Danny and um, Hadley. It felt like a um, I felt the wind in my mouth, but my mouth was closed at the time. And um, I heard the Lord say, today, I put my words in your mouth. And it mm -hmm. just, I just felt, I can't even explain it. I just oh, wow. blew me away because I, um, it's a part of the scripture I, I'm reading tonight. So I just, you know, I just bless God for just being who he is and just reassuring and just washing away everything that is not of him. I'm telling you, he's, he's everything. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Anyone else with a testimony? Well, I must say that I was truly blessed. And I think more so just to see how the members in the church allow themselves to be used and to have someone help draw out what the Lord has been trying to draw out in our services and that they came hungry. And when you come hungry like that, the Lord will move mightily. I mean, and, you know, it reminds me of what they said at Pentecost. We were all on one accord. We all had that hunger and thirst that God would get the glory out of what we were doing mm -hmm. and being trained and being, uh, you know, anxious to learn. And there's so much more in the prophetic that that we need as this body and i'm looking forward to what god is getting ready to do even the more so because it's it's you know we had the activation but there's there's things that in the word that needs to also be brought out more so we can have a greater understanding i'm always anxious to learn uh about the prophetic and about just god's word so i was really blessed uh yesterday and and very much encourage. Praise God. <clears throat> All right. Anybody else? All right then. We're going to move forward. Amen. And so 
tonight coming to share with us is our own Ashley Green. And uh, she got all dressed up for the occasion, praise <laughs> God. <It's> special, praise <laughs> God. He loves to do that. He likes to see me turn red, <laughs> I appreciate it. Hey, you're, you're, my, you're my buddy. Hey, I know, I know. Hey. I, um, That's today, uh, the Lord, the Lord gave me, let's first, I'm going to tell you first the title. The title is Fortified, um, Your Knowledge is Not Enough. Um, what does it mean to be fortified? It means to be strong, secure, and to be strengthened. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm coming from the scripture, Jeremiah 118. And that reads, today I have made you strong like a fortified city that cannot be captured. During this time, Jeremiah had an encounter with God, um, and God had appointed him to be prophet over the nations. And um, sidebar, at this time, I would have been sick to my stomach. I really would have been sick because I learned yesterday that to be a prophet in this time, if you gave a wrong word, they was they was taking care of you. Okay, you you were out of here. So I would have been just as scared as he was. He was, um, he immediately protested against um, what God had already spoken to him. It wasn't secondhand information. It was directly to him. He had chosen him. He had set him apart and he had appointed him. Um, immediately after um, God did all these things, he had disqualified himself. He had disqualified himself um, because he was too focused on areas where he lacked, you know. Um, after being uh, reassured by the Lord that he was going to be with him through every battle, um, that he was going to be there to protect him, he still couldn't wrap his head around um, him being young and him not feeling like he was a good speaker. He could not um, speak well as those he knew. Um, so the area where, an area where you lack in the nursing field, we call that a deficiency. Um, my question to you is, um, what areas in your life are you deficient in? You want us to answer is that? No, it was rhetorical. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you're fine okay. the lord was fortifying him the whole time and at the beginning he still couldn't see past his weaknesses um is there anything in your life that god has confirmed and affirmed but you your eyes are still fixed on uh, where you lack your deficiencies even after he's already um told you who you were um have you gotten comfortable in your deficiencies have you gotten comfortable with your weaknesses um, sometimes uh, addressing a deficiency can feel like a rabbit hole. You know, I'm referring back to the nursing field because that's what I know. Um, when you go to the doctors, um, you can go for one thing and it feels like he's going to tell you 10 other things. That's why people shy away from it. Um, and I also know that addressing the origin of the deficiency can be um, a little more painful than the deficiency itself. So when you go to the doctors, this is a question I want to ask you. Um, when you go to the doctors and you tell him your symptoms, what is the second question that is asked? What's your family history? And a lot of people don't want to um, address that their deficiencies are tied to their family history. Um, after you get family history, now we have to check your blood or we have to check your bloodline you know, but that's generational curse stuff. So I'm, I'm sticking to being fortified, but um, it can go that deep. So now what do you do from here? I have a deficiency and I know, um, and I acknowledge that I'm lacking. So I hear your heavenly HPC, your heavenly healthcare provider saying, what do you need? You know, is it love? If you need love, then you can go to 1 John 4, 9 to 10. This is love. 
It is not that we love God first, but he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice. Is it healing? Then if it's healing, then we'll go to Psalms 103, two and three. Let my whole being bless the Lord and never forget all his good deeds and how he forgives our sins. He heals all of our sicknesses. Um, if it's peace, you can go to Philippians 4.10. Do not be anxious in anything, but in everything with prayer and supplication. But if you go further down in the text, it says, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and mind in Jesus Christ. I will call these um, spiritual vitamins. You know, you have a deficiency, so you fortify yourself with this word. Um, and if there's ever, other, any other things that you need, I would um, do the same. You take what you need to fill yourself. I'm going to get a little personal, but I don't mind sharing. So Friday, um, I had a really tough time. I kind of felt um, like off. Something wasn't right. Um, I had been struggling with staying focused in school. Um, I would get physically sick on tests. And, um, you know, it was just rough. But Friday was really, really rough. So I called and made a doctor's appointment. And um, I talked to the doctor. She gave me, um, she made me take a test. So I took a test. And um, she asked me some questions. She asked me if there was any links. And I was honest with her. And um, she, she diagnosed me with um, PTSD from my previous school because of the damage it did to me. I had, I've had, even in this semester, um, just trouble focusing. I wasn't doing well on any of my tests. And um, she offered, you know, medication, therapy. And let me just... Before I even go further, I'm going to say this. It is perfectly okay to have Jesus, medication, and therapy. You are still a believer. Um, it doesn't take away from your belief in what you believe God is capable of doing. Um, you're just putting where you lack. If you lack dopamine, which is the feel-good um, chemical in your brain, if it's low, then you have to, you replace it with something that can help you put it back there. You know, if you're low in vitamin D, it's the same thing. You take the vitamin to restore what you lack. There's no shame in that. And that's something I wrestled with, especially with the medication. Um, I am going to get therapy, but I say all that to say, um, there are ways you can fortify yourself. I had these issues back at the old school and I, I, I ignored it. And it got progressively worse. I could have had a breakdown. Something could have happened, you know, but God, he protected me. Um, one thing I can say was leading up to that doctor's appointment, I had a, um, started to have a panic attack. It wasn't until she put the pieces together where um, I, we found out the origin of the thing that the anxiety came down. Now I know how to work with it because I know where it came from. So I say all that to say, um, I received the revelation, but I didn't receive the diagnosis. That's just me. You know, I learned, you know, I know that, you know, my confidence is being um, restored even now. You know, I'm not ignorant to the fact that I had this experience, but I refuse to receive that that's my resting place because I believe God can um, use me in this area. I do also acknowledge that this didn't, it didn't happen to me, it happened for me. You know, um, God had revealed to me as well that this is your experience to pull somebody up out of it when they're going to be in your shoes. You're just passing through this experience. I do acknowledge that. And um, I just bless the Lord for it. <clears throat> so we said that, um, we go to our spiritual vitamins, which is our scripture to fortify ourselves. We also can fortify ourselves in prayer and fasting. And you can find it in Matthew 6, 16 to 8, and Matthew 17 to 21. We also can um, fortify ourselves in praise. <laughs> Allow yourself to recall the goodness of God and continue to recall back those things that God has brought you out of and it will send you into a place of praise where you forget 
why you forget how you were feeling prior to you getting in there. Um, allow a song to be on your lips and worship. Sing yourself through. We come from a household. Somebody can hum, okay? We'll take that thing into a whole nother song. We'll take it into a, a place where God can just pour out or take away or just pour his love all over us. You know, um, there's many times where a song will come up in my heart and I begin to sing and it just sends me into worship. And I'm like, where did this, I wasn't even thinking about this song, but it just, it took me to another place and it pulled me up out of where I was. So we said we can fortify ourselves in prayer and fasting. We can fortify ourselves in praise. We can fortify ourselves in worship. We can also be fortified by our loved ones and our community and our friends and family. You know, um, even though Jeremiah was afraid and he felt inadequate and he felt intimidated, he still was obedient to what the Lord said. You know, it's okay to go to mom. It's okay to go to dad. It's okay to go to your prayer partner and even your pastor, but it's even better when you go straight to the great physician, which is Christ Jesus. He is our mighty fortifier. He is the bomb of Gilead. He is Jehovah Rapha, our healer. With him, there is no copay. He is easily accessible. Thank you, Lord. You don't need any assurance for his assurance. He is better than Teladoc. He is 24-7, 365. Just acknowledge your deficiencies. And if they're too painful to speak on, just say, Father, I need you. I need you, Lord. And he knows, he knows where you are in that place. Um, he knows he will meet you right where you are. Um, as I close... I just want to um, just pray, if I may. Um, dear Lord, we just I just thank you for um, your people, Lord. I thank you for the love you've poured upon us. I just thank you, Lord. Um, I pray that we acknowledge our deficiencies, and not only do we acknowledge them, that we look at them, Lord, your word in Psalms 119, 71 to 26. So to 72 says, it was good that I was afflicted. I was, I was afflicted so that I might learn your decrees, Lord God. I pray that we just um, turn over all things that may be hindering us from growing closer to you because there is a great work for all of us to do, Lord God. I pray that you just um, encamp your angels around us continuously. You are the great physician, Lord, um, who has customized the staff for our wounds, Lord. Allow us to um, look into ourselves and allow us to um, just turn everything over to you, even the things that we do not know, even the deficiencies that we do not know that we have, Lord God. Um, I pray that you just have your way and um, reveal them so that we can get rid of them so we can run for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So we can run to you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank wow. you. Wow. Mm -hmm. Ashley Green. <laughs> and uh, amen. Thank God for that wonderful health care. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Anyone have any uh, questions for Ashley before we mm -hmm. move forward? Mm -hmm. uh, Ashley, thank God for you. I thank God for your life. I thank God for your transparency tonight yeah. um, my question is um how was it a period of time that it took you to get to that point that hey i am i know you said it was a uh sometime get to the point where hey i gotta go see about myself to see what was going on and what exactly exactly took you there you know because so many people won't so many people won't admit that hey you know there's something really happening mm -hmm. i know so, you said it was a period of time so um i had already been going through stuff at my uh previous school which was about almost a year and a half now mm -hmm. and i had said something to my teacher and she kind of like blew me off um, cause mm -hmm. I wasn't doing too well there, but I still was trying. Um, so then I blew it off. 
You know, I, so many things went through my mind. I was thinking about me being a black woman in the African-American community. Um, we could be at the highest point of trauma and be like, oh, we still got it. I can still push through this. I've been, you know, we, dis we discount ourselves and then um, just being a believer in Christ. So, you know, you kind of stifle it like, oh, it's okay. Um, it started getting bad, I'm gonna be honest. I was given Mariah the business. She would ask me questions and I would lash out and um, she would walk on eggshells around me and she would um, kind of be timid. She, if it's okay, can I tell you how I feel? And I'm like, we don't have that kind of com relationship. You know, you can come to me about everything. So I was noticing my behaviors and um, I was having trouble sleeping eat all of the above so it just got it just got bad Friday I felt like I couldn't even get out of bed as I was driving up to the um doctor's office as I told you my heart was pounding I experienced that before and I said I I can't keep doing this and I, I can't keep this is no way to live I can't live like this um it's beginning to be too much you know and it, it runs in my family so, so that was the point where you know my daughter shouldn't have to suffer because her mother's going through something that she's in denial about. So here we are. Let's keep me in prayer. Amen. I know. And it, as you said, it doesn't make us any less of a believer mm -hmm. when we finally say, hey, enough is enough. So thank you for just that. And as Bishop said, that wonderful health lesson and you being in that field, I'm sure it's going to bless somebody else. And it blessed me tonight just to hear and you know, hear your heart. I'm grateful. Thank you. It was, it was excellent, Ashley. It was. I'm, I'm very proud of you because it took a lot to share yeah. some intimate stuff about, about your personal self. Mm -hmm. But you're an overcomer. Hallelujah. You're an overcomer. And because of the desire to get better you've already started that overcome time you will have the victory because he did like you said he didn't allow you to go through that and not take you past that so i'm very proud of you thank you thank you praise god ashley sister ashley it really helped me to thank god for you and for your pureness um, to share with us everything. Uh, I really like when you spoke about um, even after God has already told us who we are, you really hit things. You really hit it tonight. You, you, you have me thinking about restoring what I lack, acknowledging my deficiencies, um, receiving the revelation. You just, it was power packed and I just thank you and I love you. And yes, I pray with you and for you, and you pray with me too. We're a family that prays together and will stay together. I love you. I love you too. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ashley. One of the things that you said um, that was really that really resonated with me was this whole concept of, and I've said it before, and I echo you in that you can you can have, love Jesus, okay, and take your medicine. And it's okay and have your therapist like it's, it's there's no compete competing um or competition there god has the ultimate reign and when you were talking it made me think of the um when jesus put the solve on the eyes right mm -hmm. it's like sometimes the lord will use something external especially in relationship to other people to bring healing and that's not something that we should be ashamed of like so you went to your you went to someone who was flesh and blood to assist you, even though you know God is still healing you. God mm -hmm. is still delivering you. God is setting you free. God has done some things even over the time. And so I think that that was just inspiring. And it and if nothing else, I think it gives other people the freedom to have that conversation with themselves and with God. So I definitely appreciate your um, transparency and, and all of those things. Thank you. And I love you. You're so proud. I'm proud. Like I'm older. I'm not even older. I'm proud. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I'm grateful to be able to share that because I wrestled with um, even going to my mom and dad. I don't even know. I know my mom knows now, but 
we would go out to dinner and then something would just hit me and I would have to run to the bathroom and cry. I, nothing happened to me. I would just cry and I would have to get myself together and look, make sure I look like ain't nothing wrong with me because we having a family out and everything's going well. And um, I'm, it, it, that's not a life to live. I'm telling you, I'm sharing because if this is something you are going through, please, you're not going through it alone, number one. And you don't have to wait till this deficiency gets to a point where it paralyzes you. Yeah. It, it, there's no, you, who are you trying, what are you trying to prove? What are you trying to prove? Yeah. Um, I just wanted to comment. Um, I appreciate you talking about those deficiencies and, you know, God knowing our deficiencies, right? Um, but, you know, of course, God calling us in spite, in spite of, despite that, right? And it really, we have to remember that this is why we need him. Oh, I'm about to, I feel a little, sorry. This is why hey, we need off, him. Honey, take off. <laughs> this is why, you know, we need him. This is why. Um, we have relationship with him. This is why we have the Holy Spirit. This is why we continually press so that um, Jesus Christ can be glorified in us because we need him. And so even in our deficiencies, our proclivities, that we had to remember that we don't, we don't, um, we don't idolize the proficiencies, mm -hmm. right? We, we honor the king. Right. We honor the one who made us because he knew that we were imperfect. And so um, all God has is imperfect people to use. And mm -hmm. so we have to remember that in spite of that, he can still get the glory. He can still get the honor and his mission can still be accomplished through us. You know, so I thank you for that. I thank you for sharing. Um, anxiety is absolutely a real thing, but especially um, those of color, because it's a whole bunch associated, but <laughs> it's so much. And so I thank you for being transparent and sharing that because it's a real thing. And in this day and age, more and more people are going through anxiety as well as P um, PTSD. So thank you for sharing. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Ashley. This is Mary Weldon. And I would want to say thank you for opening up and sharing with us. And um, Every year, I'm just going to make it very brief, everybody. <laughs> Every year we have to do this test for Laura Marion uh, on safety and everything. And, you know, sometime in high school, I would panic. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't like to take tests, you know, and I, I don't like to share a lot of things about my personal life, but um, God made it fit in the past seven years that I could share everything with my family the trials that I was going through and is going through. I mean, he have just, he just opened that door. And um, like, I, I can't say one of my family members are saved, but they know who I am and they um, accept me for who I am. And they're there for me. God will use the, the ones that are not as well. So um, every year I, I get so close to taking this test and I panic. But God have enabled me to pass this test and submit it to HR. And then now everything is so computerized. Mm -hmm. It's going it to make me want to stop working. So, <laughs> but God is giving me somebody to help me at work. And thank God for my principal who's um, just understand who I am, you know, and they're giving me the help that I need. And, you know, I work in a school. And, mm -hmm. you know, these are people in the Laura Marion School District that mm -hmm. are up there, but I know who I am in Christ. So thank you for sharing, you know, about your anxiety because you're not the only one. You're not the only one that, you know, like just go through things, but this trial that you're going through, I want to leave you with this. God knows just what you need and he's going to see you through. Amen. 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 Yes, ma'am. Amen. Thank you. Love you too. Love you too. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Ashley. Uh, I am a little older than you are. Uh, not much, but a little older than you are. Someone <laughs> said they were younger than you and they were proud of you. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I am 
a little older than you, and I'm proud I'm of not, you. Though. And thank so you. Um, thank you for hey openness and transparency. Um, you know, I believe some of the best teaching is um, uh, that has that will have an impact on the lives of people. Uh, is teaching where people are transparent and open and honest, right? right. And so, because um, there are many people experiencing what you're experiencing, but you know they're 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 hiding and they're not they're in the closet, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But um, thank you for uh, your transparency, and also thank you for reminding us um, that we don't know everybody's story. Amen. And so it humbles us. It should humble us before we before we put our mouths on people uh, because we don't know their story. We don't know what they're going through. And we don't know mm -hmm. even their desire to be all that God wants them to be. And maybe they're falling short. And all and all we see is the the falling short. I mm -hmm. I saw this um this video the other day. I think it was because I was preparing for the prophetic uh conference and you know, we can we can say things that are true, but yet it's not the truth. Right? We can say things that are true, but it's not the truth. We, we, we can look at people's actions and say, oh, you know, they're this and they're that. Mm -hmm. That's true, but it's not the truth. The truth is, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Right. Right? So, and, and, and that's the sad part that we can speak about things that are true, but not speaking the truth. And when we get to that place as a body, where we begin to speak truth over people's lives, we're, we're, gonna, see, we're gonna see transformation. We're gonna see empowerment, amen. And so hopefully one of the things that, you know, um, I, I wanna do, uh, especially with some of, you know, the young women is to, you know, speak truth. Yeah, yeah. To you and to empower you and to, um, you know, um, you know, Sometimes, you know, um, sometimes I can take my, my, my role very lightly because I just want to be one of the boys, so to speak, right? You know, just, you know, I don't want to be elevated, exalted to a position, you know, where, you know, people see me up here and they're down mm -hmm. there. But, you know, I want to see us as co-laborers, co-laborers. But yet, it, even in that co-laboring, I know that there is... Um, uh, there's a ministry that I need to perform, right? And part of that is encouraging, encouraging uh, the saints of God. And, and someone said, you know, they they want to hear, you know, uh, their 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 apostolic father to say, hey, you're doing a good job. I appreciate you. And so, you know, I, I want to be mindful of that. So, you know, I do appreciate you, and um, you know, I, I want to help, you know, bring bring out what God has deposited in you. Praise God, hallelujah. And that there is there is a word and that there is thing that you can say that would indeed impact and encourage us. So thank you for stepping out in faith, praise God. And so um, it'll get easier on the journey. Praise in God. Jesus name, because you already know, I was shaking like a leaf. Amen. <laughs> I'm good now. I thank you for um, just allowing God to use you and speak through me. Um, and I just, I appreciate your presence and I appreciate your um, humility. I know you said that, you know, you just want to be one of the boys, but um, just you being really down to earth, it makes me feel comfortable to, you know, come and tell you, you know, I'm going through this or I'm going through that, I'm having a rough one. And I feel like that's the, um, the culture of our house, you know? We might bicker with each other, but, you know, we still can express how we feel and still feel comfortable with um, sharing. So thank you for um, being a the thermostat of the house and creating a space for us. We love you, too. Amen. Man, I want to say you look marvelous. I know you got all pretty up for tonight. Praise God. Hallelujah. That, that, that guy might be watching tonight. Who knows? Amen. And we're done. Come on now. <laughs> Hey, you know, my mom to say, look, don't go out in the house with your head all wrapped up, looking all skanky and whatever. You don't know who you're going to meet. Praise God. Oh, no. That Boaz might be, you know, in the market. You're just going to get some potatoes and some and some and some and some eggs 
And you mm-hmm. know, I'm just going to throw this rag around my head. You might mm-hmm. miss your bow ass. Hey, good at my looking good. My bow ass might like rings. You never know. <laughs> he might like a little. No, I'm joking. <laughs> hey, I'm teasing. Hey, you guys are beautiful. Um, you know, um, boy, I am just blessed to, um, I'm just blessed to pastor the best church in the whole wide world. Amen. That's just how I feel. Praise God. And um, hey, nobody's going to talk bad about the sheep at House of the Faith. We're going to have a fight. Amen. I mean, that's right. Sheep. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. And so, um, um, on a lighter note, um, uh, Deacon Conrad McDowell was taken to the hospital on last night. And so, um, let's continue to you know, pray for him and um, uh, and let's just pray that, let's just pray that God will give him a victory, amen. And that um, uh, that they'll be able to rectify the situation without having to do, uh, you know, rectify by doing the least that they have to do and not the, and not the greatest, all right? And so, uh, so continue to keep him up in prayer. All right, he is in, um, I think, Methodist Hospital, South Philly, and um, and so uh, if anybody can get down there, especially the men of valor, uh, you know he's in Methodist Hospital, and I believe it's in South South Philly. All right, praise God. And Bishop, yes. Uh, could you pray as well? Everyone, pray for my my niece Charisse. She's in Abington Hospital, and um, they found a mass on her ovaries, and it's it's not it wasn't good. And so, um, could you just lift her up and pray? Her name is Sharice Johnson. Name Sharice Sharice. Mm-hmm. Amen. Wow. All right. Um, so, okay, I'm going to ask. Um, if Prophetess Danielle will close it out in prayer, and um, and let's remember uh, Sharish and um, Brother Conrad and Deaconess Conrad. Yep. Uh, I have a prayer request before we close out. We mm-hmm. pray for uh, the Baggett family and the Livingston family. We, um, my husband's brother's wife, lost her mother yesterday. Mm-hmm. Uh, her name is Barbara Baggett. That's my sister-in-law who lost her mother yesterday. Amen. Uh, also, um, pray for um, my friend, Dr. Tapscott, uh, his sister transitioned last night also. So mm. that will comfort them. All right, Prophetess Danielle, it's yours. And um, amen. Hallelujah. Father, so we just thank you for this time, Father. We thank you that we are being fortified, that we are being um, challenged, Father. I pray that this word will just take root, but just cause us to um, to think, to chew on it, to mull over it, Lord. I pray that we can think about it for the rest of the week, Lord, and challenge us in areas, Lord, where we're not putting you first. In those areas where we are allowing the deficiencies to speak louder, to um, to to speak louder than what you have to say about us. So I thank you, Lord, for Ashley. I thank you for her transparency. I thank you, Father, um, that you are growing her, that you are continuing to mature and perfect her in the name of Jesus. I pray, fa- Father, that as you continue to put a fire in her belly and words um, to give a revelatory word, I pray, Lord, that you would continue to Um, Let her know, Lord, that um, she is yours, that she is a child of the king, that she um, can do all things through you, Christ Jesus, who strengthens her, Lord. So I just thank you for um, favor on her life, on her household, in the name of Jesus. I pray that you will continue to keep her and keep her mind in perfect peace. We thank you for the peace of God that passes all understanding to be her portion. Yeah, God, to be her portion in this season, Father, as she continues her studies, as she continues to do what you have called her to do in the name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you for all the saints on here, Lord. I thank you for... um, 
um, Deacon Conrad. I pray, Lord, that you would... Um, that um, sickness will not be his portion. I come against the spirit of infirmity, Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus that um, the doctors, Lord, will be able to um, handle him with care, to be able to handle um, the ailments, oh God, in the name of Jesus. I pray for a swift recovery, oh God, in the name of Jesus. I also pray for Shanice Johnson in the name of Jesus. We know that you are a God of miracles, signs, and wonders, oh God. I pray, Father, that what is not like you, oh God, would um, um, will shrink up, will die, oh God, will be burned by fire in the name of Jesus. I pray that um, by your stripes that she will be healed in the name of Jesus. I also pray for the Tabscott family. I pray that you would um, that you will heal hearts, oh God, in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father, that you will send your comfort, oh God, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for their life. I thank you for their uh, family, oh God. I pray, Lord, that um, this time of mourning would not uh, be one that turns into a burden that turns into a bitterness, oh God. But I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you will carry them through this season, oh God. And I pray, Father, that they would take comfort in you. And I also um, pray for the baggage uh, sister-in-law, mother, oh God, in the name of Jesus and the family. I pray, Father, that you will also bring comfort, that you will bring healing, oh God, that you will heal hearts, oh God. I pray that um, that no um, dissension or of any kind, no discord of any kind would um, happen, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And I pray for togetherness. I pray that they would lean on one another, oh God, and provide comfort for one another in the name of Jesus. I thank you for everybody on this Zoom, Lord, and I pray that you will fortify them. I pray, Father, that um, your sweet spirit, oh God, will rest on them, rest in them in the name of Jesus. I pray that they will dream dreams, oh God. I pray that they will have visions, oh God. I pray that they will be activated in the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, have a blessed evening. Praise God. Some of you out here in the morning.